Mother, I have joined the internet. Escapism. Why, yes, I think I will ignore my problems. In ye olden times, people were preoccupied with a little thing called survival, but nowadays, we're more interested in survival crafting. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about, baby. Two million players, please don't sue. The term escapism was first recorded in 1933, and things have only gotten worse. People used to have to rely on the classics, music, books, drugs, but thanks to the power of technology, we have more options than ever. And thank goodness, have you seen outside? There's inflation, corporate price gouging, crazy housing costs, stagnant wages, holy moly man. How do you even start to fix so many problems? Well, you can't. I mean, I can't and you can't. Individually, we are powerless. My precious power ring, gone forever! It would take a whole lot of people a whole lot of time to even begin to make a dent. But you know what's easier? Playing RuneScape. I may not be able to afford a 700k property in LA, but I can get a nice little place in Taverly for just 1,000 coins. In real life, it's hard to make a meaningful difference. But here, everything I do makes funny number go up. Level 43 construction, yippee! But games are just the tip of the iceberg. I want something more. I want to forget I exist. Cause I'm sick of this world, man. Give me a new one. A virtual one. A fully immersive social experience unlike anything before. Yeah, uh, technology has really only come so far, but while we wait for the future to take us away, let's indulge in a little of my favorite form of escapism, nostalgia, by looking back on the virtual worlds of old. When I say virtual worlds, I'm not talking about video games, though I'm sure Azeroth is lovely this time of year. I'm talking about social platforms. Think Club Penguin or Habo Hotel. They're kind of games, but also not. There's no specific goal beyond chatting with strangers and finding the coolest hat you can buy. I mean, you can't beat Club Penguin. Well, unless you count speedrunning how fast you can get banned, in which case, congrats to these guys, you did it. But what I'm trying to describe is a metaverse. Now hold on just a minute. Are you talking about that there virtual reality where Godzilla fights Mr. Gundam? Uh, no. When I say metaverse, I don't want you to think of the sci-fi pop culture concept of a fully interconnected and immersive virtual reality because that doesn't exist. A real metaverse looks like this. Sorry Zuckerberg, you could have saved yourself 50 billion dollars. Just buy some Robux, man. Not only has a metaverse already been invented, but many of them have come and gone over the years. And, uh, I've dabbled, okay? I've been on this grind since the dial-up days, and in my mind, there's no better example of a metaverse than Second Life. I mean, it's right there in the name. This isn't a game, it's a life. You playing that game again? Second Life is not a game. It is a multi-user virtual environment. It doesn't have points or scores, it doesn't have winners or losers. Oh, it has losers. It launched in 2003, created by Linden Lab. And these guys weren't messing around. Great minds from all over the industry, such as EA, eBay, Disney, Adobe, and Apple, have come together to create an experience like no other. Just look. You're starting to piss me off, and that's not a wise move. Inspiring. Second Life was the first successful metaverse and offered players a chance to explore, meet other users, socialize, and participate in activities. You can build and create, you can shop and trade, players can run real businesses that earn real money. One USD is equivalent to 320 Linden dollars, and together, creators cash out 60 million dollars a year even today, running businesses like fashion brands or developing and selling land like a virtual Amsterdam that went for 50k. In fact, the first virtual millionaire arose in 2006 and was featured on the cover of Business Week. Major brands like Disney and Amazon opened up virtual shops and real-life universities held virtual classes. But eventually, things started to die down, people stopped caring, and now the only thing really left these days is clubs and dancing. But hey, I'm sure the excitement will come back one day when they announce Third Life. That was a joke. Personally, I only tried Second Life for a short time. I remember roaming around aimlessly and confused, but intrigued. 
It wasn't until one year later in 2004 that I was fully ready to embrace the virtual world thanks to the release of IMVU. Ooh, what does that stand for? Instant Messaging Virtual Universe? Nope, that makes too much sense. Here's an explanation from the creator himself. So yeah, it doesn't, it's not an acronym, it doesn't stand for anything, it has no, no grand strategy, it just, it just seemed to work. Uh, uh, okay. And apparently the creator calls it InView, which, no, I don't want to. But hey, the name doesn't matter, the customization does. And back in the day, I was ready. Ready to scroll through the largest catalog of virtual goods ever assembled, all in pursuit of the perfect outfit, to express just how special and unique I truly was. Of course, these items weren't free, 5,000 credits is $5, but I was just a little baby boy with no money, so I had to make do with the daily spin game and scrape together whatever free credits I could win. And man, I wish I could show you my original avatar, but my account doesn't seem to work anymore and I can't find pictures. Imagine a big-headed vampire named Soul Point with a four-foot top hat. Yeah, kind of like that. I did, however, make a newer character back in 2017. Boom. Get a load of that, huh? That's so good. Huh, another top hat. I'm sensing a pattern. Uh-oh. Anyway, when I started, the client looked like this, and the avatars looked like this. Let's check out the character creator now. Interesting, but not quite me. It's perfect. Now, customizing an avatar is cool, but the coolest thing you could do was be a developer. These were the users who created and sold virtual goods, clothing, furniture, rooms, everything. We actually used to dream about being one, but the closest we ever got was doing profile image commissions on the forum. Here's one of the creators I still remember to this day, Waltzing Mouse. Oh man, I thought this stuff was so cool back then. Two guns? Whoa! Popular creators can earn thousands of dollars per month and there are still over 50k developers creating items every day. It's kind of crazy to think about because IMVU is 20 years old now, but it still has 3 million monthly active users. Even today, it's number 43 on the App Store for social networking. Man, it's hard to believe something that used to look like this is still around, but I'm kind of glad it is. Or at least I would be if I hadn't seen that they're now doing crypto and NFTs. So, yikes. Everything ends. So, that's the past. And also the present, I guess. But what about the future? There have been so many attempts at a metaverse over the years. There.com, Kaneva, World, PlayStation Home, VR Chat. Th does that count? I think it counts. But what holds the most promise, the most potential? Well, what if I told you that one particular company has been diligently working towards the goal of a metaverse for years, and that company is Epic Games. That's right, Mr. Fortnite himself. This isn't new information. If you've been paying attention to the most popular game of the last decade, you may have noticed a few metaverse type of experiences pop up, like being able to attend a live Marshmallow concert back in 2019, which Daniel here actually attended or when they released the Party Royale mode in 2020, which is really just a metaverse if it had zero features, but hey, it's the thought that counts. Epic has been creating for a while now with the thoughts of a metaverse at the front of their mind, from their more recent forays into kart racing and Guitar Hero to their release of UEFN, a massive tool set allowing for complex user-created content. They've been developing and testing all of the various pieces that make up a standard metaverse experience. They even developed a character creator of sorts that makes really freako, mommy I'm scared typo models. And what did they call it? Metahuman Creator. That's so meta, man. And this isn't just me theorycrafting. Epic has talked about the metaverse a lot, and while they acknowledged the fact that for a metaverse to truly flourish, it cannot be owned by any singular company, they have publicly stated their intent to be a leader in the space. But will companies ever really come together to undertake such a massive, risky project? Companies hate working with each other. No, I want all their money, not just a couple billion. <laughs> so does Epic actually have the mountains of cash and brand recognition required to lead the way to a new successful metaverse? If not, then who does? Or is the idea of one metaverse to rule them all simply too ambitious? I hope not. 
I for one cannot wait to be virtually arrested for throwing myself into oncoming traffic. But until then, I'll leave you with a comment that really sums up everything from Reddit user Megazard, who states, Upon further thought, the closest thing we have to a metaverse is simply the sign-in with Google option. Wow, the f future is now.